In the following groups of frames, including grill, acanthus, arabesque or U decoration, fish scale, and so forth, each type had an initial design element, such as the grill, which could be combined with a number of other elements, such as moldings or bands of leaves with berries, etc., into variations for different frame widths and weights. The combination of moldings were cast into corners from which white or an artist or patron could select. White sometimes referred to these moldings by letter patterns, such as K pattern. The price of the frame would depend on the size of the painting and the type of gilding. The color and texture of the gold would be specified to harmonize with the tonalities of the picture it bordered. The corners were photographed, and it was possible to order the pattern from the photograph. This was particularly useful for out-of-town clients who might be sent a photograph such as we see here. White was very specific, however, that he had complete control and authority over his designs. He repeatedly told both the frame makers and clients that he had to give permission for his designs to be used. However, in one case, White became very close to the patron and collector, Charles Lang Freer, who ended up owning more of White's frames than any other collector. In a departure from his usual strict working method, White gave instructions to the frame maker, Oscar Rudolph, that he could make any frame for Freer without having to ask permission. The majority of these frames are still in the collection of the Freer Gallery of Art. Oscar Rudolph, like Cabus, also executed interior architectural details. White gave much of his frame business to Rudolph after his disenchantment with Alexander Cabus, and he worked for White from 1895 on. Seen here is a piece of Rudolph's amusing letterhead with the bill for a frame for Stanford White. As mentioned before, there are patterns in certain artists using a particular design. This design, which is now known as the grill design, was preferred by Thomas Wilmer Dewing and was probably used exclusively by him during White's lifetime. The grill and the manipulations of spatial effects might have been inspired by White's prominent use of grills in architecture. Seen here is a detail of one of the grills in the Kingscote dining room. The grill in both cases influences the manner in which the surrounding objects are perceived. In the case of Dewing's ethereal paintings of women, the grill serves to insert a buffer of void space between the picture and the environment. There are two different kinds of grill frames. In the first and more elaborate, a thin grill made of metal was suspended over an OG-shaped cove. This would allow for some space in between the grill and the back, and to further enhance the effect of space, different kinds of gilding, such as water gilding or oil gilding, could be applied. If water gilding was used on the cove area, it could be burnished, giving a shiny, luminous effect underneath the grill. This is the blue dress of 1892 by Thomas Dewing at the Freer Gallery. In the other kind of grill frame, the grill and the ground are made of a single piece, with the whole cast out of compo. There is no distinct pattern as to the dates of the separate or attached grills, Rather, the difference seems to have been a matter of cost, as the separate grill would have been finer, more complex to make, and thus more expensive. There are variations, as well in the quality of these frames, which might indicate that certain frames are used to make molds from which later generations of the frame could be cast. These two are both good quality frames with a separate grill, but there are significant differences in the fineness and the delicacy of the grill. The frame from Dewing's Girl with the Lute at the Freer was made by another of White's frame makers, William C. LeBrock. LeBrock was an interior decorator who worked for Charles Lang Freer in Detroit. He apparently got started in the frame business through the architect Charles A. Platt, for whom he made plain frames. Alexander Cabus, White's earlier frame maker, believed that one of his workmen had stolen his models and given them to LeBrock, who later executed many of White's designs. The next kind of frame is called the arabesque or U decoration, which is composed of tightly spaced arabesques laid on an OG curve or flat sloping form. This design is most often seen on tryons and doings, although the example here is on a Thayer portrait at the Freer Gallery. This picture by Doing was part of a triptych of the seasons, flanked by two paintings by Dwight Tryon. The three works were originally owned by Frank J. Hecker of Detroit. Hecker was a business associate of Charles Lang Freer, and his collecting taste closely paralleled Freer's. The doing frame was in the U decoration, 
while the two Tryons had a fan decoration. The fact that the paintings were framed to be together as a series shows the manner in which the ornamentation was felt by White to be harmonious, as well appropriate for their installation in Hecker's French-style parlor. Here is the third painting of the triptych, Fall, by Dwight Tryon. The floral swag, which is overlaid on top of the fan decoration, shows the way in which White layered designs and certainly is reminiscent of similar treatments seen on the facade of Madison Square Garden. The overlay of the garland over the fan ground illustrates White's skill at combining various kinds of decoration in much the same way that he added and layered beautiful objects to his lush red velvet covered interiors. The fish scale ornament is related to the arabesques and fans and was always combined with other decorative details including bound wreaths and bands of leaf and berry ornament. Here is an example of a fish scale frame. This is a somewhat bolder and more aggressive design used on a very large horizontal painting called Dawn by Dwight Tryon at the Freer. The fluted acanthus frame is very often seen on works by John Henry Twachman. The prominent decorative element is bands of acanthus leaves set down parallel to one another in a pattern reminiscent of fluting. The detail seen here is on a Robert Reed painting at the Detroit Institute of Arts. The frame on the doing picture of Tobias and the Angel at the Metropolitan Museum illustrates another variant of frame composed of numerous rows of different moldings. Similar treatment of a frame surface can be seen on the carved frame for St. Gaudens portrait of Robert Louis Stevenson. The Tobias and the Angel painting was originally owned by Edward Dean Adams, a wealthy New York businessman and friend for whom White also designed a country house. The comparison of a carved frame of many moldings and a gilded one shows how the design is transformed by the richness of the gold which would reflect light back onto the work of art. This type of frame with parallel moldings can be seen on one of the earliest documentable frames by White, on Dewing's Prelude, seen here as published in a view of the Charles T. Barney House in Artistic Houses in 1883. White was also responsible for the design and interior decoration of this house in New York. It is also interesting to note how White has combined different kinds of shallow surface ornament in the overmantel. The gilded frame in a later version was made by Newcomb Macklin. Newcomb Macklin, originally a Chicago frame making firm founded in 1871 and with a branch in New York after 1912, seems to have ended up with Stanford White's designs. The designs or photographs of the corners, many of which have been shown, were published in 1920 in Lawrence Grant White's book about his father. However, Newcomb Macklin advertised as early as 1916 in the International Studio, as seen here, that they had exclusive Stanford White frames. The next type of frame, which is seen in different variations, is one with the dominant ornament based on a woven pattern. This frame is on a Thayer painting, The Virgin at the Freer Gallery of Art, but this type is also seen on doings and other artists. An early use of a woven decorative pattern is the interior of the Newport Casino, dating from about 1880. As with the frame, White has combined it with other types of decorative detail, either fluted roundels and scallop shells at the casino, or crosseted corners and gadruning on the frame. Here is a variation of the woven pattern seen on Dwight Tryon's Early Spring in New England from the Freer Gallery. The frame was made by Alexander Cabus. Tryon was so pleased with the frame that he ordered an identical one for another painting. One of the most interesting groups of frames is on a series of the seasons by Dwight Tryon at the Freer Gallery. Here are spring and summer. The basic form of the frame is seen in the photograph of the frame corners but the decoration was adapted individually to each of the frames, adding an appropriate floral border for each season. This painting is spring. And these are details of summer and autumn.